different coaching service sales models. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a quick overview of the different ways you can sell your personal expertise. If you have decided to coach people or earn money as a coach, please understand that there are many ways to do it. You're not stuck with just one channel. There are actually several channels you can use to make money selling your personal expertise. This is just an overview. I'm going to devote one video for each of these specific channels. Sell books. If you like to write or if you know somebody who does, you might want to write down your expertise, put together an outline and get somebody to write a book. When you produce a book, you automatically get viewed as an expert. I know this is kind of a big claim to make, but understand that if you go to any kind of party, the vast majority of people there have not written books. You have to remember that sitting down to write a book means several things. First, you have to have something that is worth sharing. Maybe it's an interesting story. Maybe it's some sort of expertise or inside knowledge. Two, you have to have the time, effort, and discipline to actually get stuff from your mind converted into text on paper and then edit that material so it's actually readable. In other words, this takes quite a bit of discipline and commitment. The third option here is resourcefulness. Maybe you have interesting information you'd like to share, but you'd rather have somebody do it for you, and that's where ghostwriters come in. Regardless of how you cut it, when you sell books, people's inherent or instinctive respect for authors kicks in because they know how hard it is to write. They know that putting a book together is not actually a walk in the park. You get instant respect and instant authority status by simply producing one book after another in your area of expertise. Sell video courses. Let's face it, if you're trying to teach somebody a new concept, one of the most effective ways to do this is not to get them to sit down and read a book you wrote. Sure, your book might have all sorts of interesting graphics and diagrams, but at the end of the day, there's really no substitute for face-to-face -face interaction. This doesn't mean that you have to be in front of them live. You can shoot a video and have the same effect. How come? Well, when people watch a video of you giving a lecture or speaking directly to them, sharing information, they pay close attention to your eyes. They also pick up on your facial expressions, your gestures, and your body language. Finally, they make snap judgments about how you talk, what you talk about, and how quickly you speak. All of these are instantly put together in their minds and they make a quick judgment. Either they feel comfortable and they think you are trustworthy enough to listen to and learn from, or they simply reject you at some level or other. They may seem like they're listening, but they're not. Still, when people watch videos, a lot of this dynamic is replicated. This is why platforms like Udemy.com are so popular and successful. People spend millions of dollars every single year on courses from this platform to learn all sorts of subjects. You don't necessarily have to put your video courses on Udemy, but you can benefit from the same dynamic. Video courses do work because when people watch you and you're animated and they see you talk excitedly about a subject that they're interested in, chances are they will absorb that information and find you credible enough and authoritative enough to want to buy more courses from you. Scheduled webinars. Scheduled webinars are quite different from video courses. When you shoot a video course, there's really no time element. You can shoot it all at one time, and as long as people are able to access your website, they can pay you money to access your videos. They can watch your video the next day, or they can watch your series two years from now. They still see you on video, they engage with what they see, and they pick up information. Live scheduled webinars operate on a different dynamic. The visitor actually has to show up to view your video at a scheduled time. When they go to your webinar sign-up page, they have to set up an appointment. Once they have selected a specific date and time, they get an email reminder to show up. After all, they paid for the webinar or they pay when they show up. A lot of coaches prefer this method because you work less. Unlike a video course where you basically have to shoot hours of footage covering a wide range of subjects because you are teaching people a fairly comprehensive set of information, scheduled webinars are actually more compact. Usually, they run no more than two hours. When you hold a seminar, you only focus on a fairly narrow range of topics. This saves you a tremendous amount of time. In terms of presentation, it also saves you quite a bit of resources when it comes to actual research. Still, scheduled webinars are actually recorded videos. So, these people that are signing up for a specific type of information are actually just setting up an appointment to watch a pre-recorded video on a fairly narrow topic. There is really no one-to-one -one interaction. There's definitely no interaction with the audience. People just sign up to watch the video at a specific date and a specific time. Live webinars. A live webinar is pretty self-explanatory. People show up at a specific time. They book that time and they pay for it. You show up and you speak relatively briefly about a pre-scheduled set of topics. After that, it's a free-for-all. The people who show up in front of their computers to see you on webcam can then turn on their cameras and you can see them asking you all sorts of questions. The value of live webinars is the interplay between you and your audience members. 
please understand that different audiences have different interests and different questions. It also depends on when your webinar is set. If you're setting it at a specific time of the year where people are concerned about giving gifts or planning vacations, those are probably the kinds of questions you will get. If you were to set up your webinar earlier in the year or in the middle of the year, people might have different interests. Whatever the case may be, live webinars can run anywhere from one to four hours, and its value really all boils down to the questions people bring and your answers to those questions. There's also a tremendous amount of call and response between you and your audience members. They send you signals. You send them signals. They're excited. You get excited. And everybody has a good time. One-on-one -on -one coaching. This form of coaching involves somebody going to your website, setting up a schedule for you to talk to them one-on-one -on -one over Google Hangouts or Skype. When that time comes, they show up, you show up, and you provide coaching. For them to book you for that appointment, they have to pay. This is a great way to directly coach somebody. There's really no right or wrong answer regarding which sales model you should choose. However, if you are serious about building a solid expert brand, you might want to consider doing all five because if you think about it, they all flow into each other. The more people are exposed to your books, the more famous and credible your author brand becomes. This increases the likelihood that people will sign up for more video courses. If people like your video courses, they may like it so much they would sign up for live webinars, one-on-one -on -one coaching, as well as scheduled webinars. These different channels actually reinforce you to them. They don't necessarily cancel each other out.